Welcome to the webinar. You have entered as an organizer and may now speak to any other organizers or panelists on the line. When you are ready to begin the presentation, press the Start Broadcast button on the GoToWebinar control panel to allow all attendees to hear you. This system will notify you once you begin your broadcast. The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. All right, good afternoon, everyone. It is almost 1 o'clock Chicago. Um, today is January 31st, 2019, and I'm looking out the window, and it's probably about 20 below zero here in Chicago. But I am in the office, and we are going to um, spend an hour together going over the CFRN trade setup in slow motion. Okay? <clears throat> uh, what are we going to do today? Number one. First order of business is I will go over the disclaimers. Uh, before I present anything, that's this is kind of the procedure I have to take take to present things. Uh, number two, I will go over the trade setup. I'm going to break it down. If you're brand new, this is going to be a great syllabus for you to lean on, okay? Because I'm going to break it down where, you know, I'm going to go over the, the, the setup, some of the buzzwords, and... Um, these will be some of the things that you'll be hearing Michael talk about in the training room, okay? So at the end of your trial, at least you can absorb what's going on and you have a wide eyes wide open approach uh, on whether or not you want to take the next step and become a CFRN member, okay? That's the goal for this afternoon is for you guys especially to get a grasp of what's going on, all right? So then when you're in that training room, you're getting um, the full benefit of uh, what's going on, okay? So ask questions along the way. It's fair game. It's understandable to have questions when you're brand new. Because when you walk in, Michael's going to be putting trades on, taking them off. Things are going to be happening. Um, you're going to see, um, you know, three or four charts floating around. So there'll be a lot happening. So it's understandable for you to have questions, okay? I'm here to slow it down for you, all right? If you are a CFRN member, that's great. I, I invite everyone to come in here to hang out. Uh, I'm going to make some observations. Uh, the things that people, the traps that people fall into, I'm going to um, and highlight those because that's where people seem to struggle. Uh, there's some things or some patterns I continue to see over and over and over that keep happening where people kind of stub their toe. So I want to bring it to everyone's attention, address them, and find out solutions and how to um, maybe clean those up. So we kind of tip the scales in your favor, okay? Ask questions, okay? It, this, this is what this is all about, okay? It's a slowed down environment um, for you to ask questions, okay? So not only are we going to go over the trade setup, then we're going to jump into the live market environment here. And um, we're going to put trades on and take them off. I'm going to show you how to use this crazy tower here. This is called the depth of market. This is how we buy and sell things. Um, let me move this over here. This is how we buy and sell things. And um, so I'm going to show you how to do that. And in the meantime, let me log off, log back on. One second here. Of course, I shut my email down. Give me a few seconds. Three nine six three nine three nine six three nine. Let me talk to myself through this. Three nine six three nine. Good. That's what I wanted to see, the CFR and indicator set. Um, so we'll go inside a live environment, and then we'll, um, we'll, pick, out, we'll pick out trades. Um, they're going to fit this rule set, okay? This is the rule set we're going to go over, and then we're going we're gonna to go, jump in and put trades on, and I'll show you how to manage them, and I'll tell you when to take them off. And, um, you know, if nothing fires in the next hour, then we won't do anything because that's what we're not supposed to do. We're not just to trade, just to trade. We're... Um, if nothing happens, then we won't do anything, and we'll, you know, we'll waste about an hour going over things over and over and over again. Um, 
But again, you're going to hear a common theme. If you're here every week, you're going to hear the same stuff over and over and over and over again. And, and I'm going to hammer those things so it becomes, you know, kind of a habit. And it sounds like a broken record and it gets kind of boring, but I want you to take those kind of steps when you're approaching the market. Okay. Are we trending when we have the bullish bearish cross? Engage the trend line. Get in the habit of drawing a trend line. What color is the cycle? All that stuff is going to be hammered um, in your head until it becomes, you know, just kind of a habit. Okay. I want to get you guys in a position to go over the rules, apply the rules, and then it's just instinct to, to move over into DOM and then take action. That's the goal, okay? For some people, it takes longer than others, okay? Some guys have never seen a trading platform, very new to futures. They don't know what the heck all this stuff is. So their learning curve is going to be, you know, take a lot longer. There's guys that have been around the block, and that's kind of the CFRN, kind of the background of most people that come to CFRN. A lot of guys have been around, so they've been around a DOM and a platform and all that other stuff. Unfortunately, sometimes they carry some bad habits, which um, it's hard to shake off. But anyways, that is the game plan. So to get started, let me, uh, let me shut down the live. And um, I'll get into what I have to talk about first, which is the disclaimers. Okay, now, my phones might buzz. I might have to put you on hold and hit the mute button. Don't take it personal. I just have to. Um, I got guys that are... Uh, in the market trading so in fact I know at in about 10 minutes I'm I need to put an order in for somebody so so let me get that in front of me on another platform so I'm ready to rock and roll when my alarm goes off so stand by and I promise you I will get the ball rolling here Let me confirm what I'm supposed to be doing. Okay. All right. Get that ready. And then we'll go from... Yeah, okay. All right. So here we go. First of all, I have to talk about the boring stuff, which is the disclaimers, okay? So again, I don't like to throw this up and ignore them and throw them back under the blanket, but I do like to take a few minutes to go over them because um, I've been doing this for almost 25 years, and I've really seen the good, the bad, and the ugly along the way, okay? This disclaimer can hit you right in the face if, number one, if you don't have a trading plan, Number two, if you're not using stop losses. Number three, if you're not engaged in what's going on, engaged in the market, uh, news, uh, your trading account. Um, if you kind of just forget all that stuff, ignore everything, this disclaimer is going to hit you right in the face. And basically what it says is you can lose everything and some in your trading account if you're not following those few variables that I just outlined not using a stop, not being in front of the screen, not paying attention to the market, all that stuff. This disclaimer will hit you right in the face, okay? Now, the good thing about CFRN, okay, and we're going to go over this in a few minutes, you have a set of rules, right? There's basically four rules. You're on a four-tick range chart, right? So you're looking at the market under a microscope. So, you know, you really have to be in front of the screens and engaged in what's going on in the marketplace, right? Because you're following the rules and things are moving at a fast pace, all right? Number two, every trade has a tick stop attached to it. So you're going to use stop losses. Along the way, you're going to use aggressive risk management. So you again, you have to be in front of the market and engaged in what's going on. One of the big rules that CFRN uses, they don't trade around reports, okay? So now you've You've taken that out of the equation. So the bottom line is, okay, the disclaimer is out there to scare everyone that's brand new, okay? 
because we do have guys that come into the CFR room that are brand new. Okay, they don't know what this is all about, but this is meant to scare you. And it does, and I've seen it happen where you can lose everything and some in your trading account. And the other fact of this, the other part of this too is, you know, the, the capital that you are trading should be risk capital. It can be, it has to be money that you can afford to lose and not trade, uh, change your lifestyle. Okay. That's, that's a reality too. But in any event, the idea is this, at least if you're doing all the right things, okay. You're using stops, you're watching over the, the account, you're watching prices, you're doing all the things that I just outlined, and something goofy does happen, and the market does hop over your stop, because, yep, you might be using a stop loss, but there is a risk of the market, because of some news event, hopping over your stop and not electing it, okay? At least you're in front of the screen, so you're in front of this tower here, and you're in a position to exit at market and cancel. You can hit this hot key and get the heck out of Dodge and get flat to market and cancel all your orders. Okay? So that is what this disclaimer is all about. Okay? I have to talk about it. I do talk about it. That's my alarm there. Okay, so let me take some action in the beans. course that is my phone buzzing at the same time so don't go anywhere all right I'm back all right so we were laboring over the um, uh, the disclaimer, okay? The long-winded explanation of it, okay? Um, you can lose everything and some in your trading account, period, okay? I know that's a sad way to start a webinar and stuff like that, but that is a reality, okay? Um, my relationship with CFRN, this is always a, something that always pops up, okay? Basically, CFRN, it's their indicators, Okay, they're the educator. Their indicators, what you see here on the trading platform, is property. It's their property. They had built the indicators inside my platform, which is DT Pro. So I support the platform, DT Pro, what you're seeing here. The indicators, I can support in that, downloading them, getting them flipped on, all that other good stuff. Okay, I represent. Uh, the execution and the brokerage if you decide to go down the CFRN path and use DT Pro, okay? I kind of take it a step further, okay? I am in the room every single morning. I'm in the background. Um, if someone has questions, maybe Mike steps away, I could step in and answer them, okay? I know the setup, okay? Um, there was a demand for a slowed down version of what Michael was doing in the morning, so I raised my hand and say, you know what? Every Thursday for an hour, I'll 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 do it. Um, and so, so I again I take it a step, a step really a, a another step forward basically, okay? And so sometimes people get me confused with me being with CFRN. I'm not. There is a line between. Bert and Daniel's trading and CFRN, okay? In the end, if you decide to go down the CFRN path, okay, if you decide you're going to do it, the payment relationship is between you and them, okay? You'll pay them directly, okay? Anything on their website, the videos, the um, C the CFRN 30 Thursday workshop, um, uh, Logic, uh, the Daily Double, uh the stuff, the webinar, the, the videos on their members area, okay? That is all going to be in on their website, and any problems with that, you would reach out them to them directly. When it comes to the platform, like I said, in indicators, and, hey, you know what, I have a question about this setup, Bert, or, hey, can you explain? Fine, that's all fair game. Come talk to me. I'm happy to do it, okay? There's a mutual benefit, obviously, right? If you do well, I do well, right? And so 
uh, the, the idea is to say, you know what, if I see the common denominator where everyone's having a problem, I can point that out and say, hey, look, everyone else is doing the same thing. Stop it. This Here's a solution or here's something to think about. Okay, I can point those things out, and I'm hopefully, again, that tips the scales. Okay, and that's what we're trying to do. We're not trying to fall on that line. We're about 80%, almost 90% the people that do this fail, you fall on that other line, okay? Um, that is my relationship with CFRN, okay? The biggest question I always get is, does CFRN participate in any of the commissions that are generated through me? The answer is no. They're not registered, and they have never asked. So that should be something that tells you about them, okay? The fact that they never ask says they're trying to do everything the right way. They're trying to educate everyone. They're trying to teach everyone to trade on their own. Okay? Um, and in the end, if for whatever reason you're trying to get a hold of Mike or you're trying to get a hold of Dwayne and you just can't get a hold of him, contact me because you guys know you can call me at the desk and I always pick up. And then I'll, I'll reach out to them and say, hey, would you call Joyce, please? She's been trying to get a hold of you. So that's that's also fair game. All right. Whew, that is it. Enough of that disclaimer stuff. Let's move forward and let's learn. Let's uh, get our hands dirty and learn about the setup here. Okay. So, again, as I said earlier, this is going to, for you guys that are brand new, this is going to be a good syllabus. All right. This is the setup that Michael is doing in the morning. Okay, there's other trade setups that have developed over the years, but this one has been around since pretty much day one. This is an NQ chart set back in 2012. So a big question I'll get is, hey, has something changed, been tweaked, form fitted, as the market has, you know, evolved? And the answer is no. Nothing's changed. You're going to apply the same setup in any market on this time frame okay and it's good for the four tick range daily hourly 30s five minute any time frame okay it's the same rules okay all right first order of business the time frame which is a four tick range chart range chart all right so if you have dt pro chances are you might be on a five minute or you might be on an hourly, okay? But the game plan is to get to a four tick range. See where my mouse is? Left click on the drop down box and go down to custom. Another box is gonna open up, select range bar, not tick bar, range bar. Make that one look like a four and then you're on the correct time frame. You're on a four tick range. What does that mean to you? The height of each candle is four ticks in height. Okay, some look larger, some look smaller. Okay, trust me, it's all four ticks in height. And there's an advantage to it. Okay, and the big one is in the training room, you're going to hear Michael call out highs and lows. Okay, what he's doing is he's preparing himself to place an order. Okay, he can be proactive. Okay. If he knows the highs and the lows, then he could be buying it above the market or he could be selling it below the market, okay? So if the market does blast off, he's in a position going long. If the market does break down, he's in a position to take advantage of the market dropping, okay? That is one way you can place an order and being proactive using the four tick range chart. Okay, if that happens while we're monkeying around here in the next 45 minutes, I'm going to show you how to do that. Okay, I call that kind of level two, level three kind of execution. Okay, if you're brand new, what I'm going to teach you this afternoon is if something qualifies, we'll do the simple thing and left click and get long. Okay. If we buy something, you're going to notice I'm going to be buying it in the green. And if something gets short or something that qualifies at the downside, I will left-click in the red. Okay? 
We make money if the market goes up in the green. We make money if the market goes down in the red. Okay, the execution is done in the red and green areas. Okay, all right. One of the biggest traps that people fall into, okay, is they come down the custom and they end up selecting tick bar. All right, and they make that two look like a four, and the chart looks real goofy like this. If it looks goofy, all right, you know you fell in trap number one. You need to get on a four tick range chart. Notice the difference. It's a lot smoother, okay? Let me get it on the S&P. All right. Get rid of that. Let's get back on the path here. All right, so we've established the time frame. Now we're going to focus on the top portion of the chart, okay? So here we go. Some buzzwords, okay, and we'll, we'll, we'll pop through this pretty quickly. This red and blue line is referred to as the MA1, okay, the MA1. The green line is referred to as the BBC. That is short for bullish and bearish cross, okay? Together, the BBC and the ME1 make up step number one, which is this. When the ME1 crosses the BBC, okay? When the ME1 crosses the BBC, when the MA1 crosses the BBC, that is step number one. Okay, there's three points here I just highlighted. Okay, if the MA1 is red, we're looking for selling opportunities. Okay, if the MA1 is blue, we're looking for buying opportunities. Again, the one that's highlighted here, that is a bearish cross. Okay, bearish cross here, bullish cross here. Because the MA1 is blue. This is called a bearish cross because the MA1 is red. We are looking for selling opportunities. Okay? And make note, I didn't say go short, go long, go short. Okay? We're looking for opportunities to go long and short. So again, this one that's highlighted is a bearish cross. All right? The MA1 is red telling us we want to sell rallies, okay? That kind of leads us into step number two, okay, which is this. After the cross, the normal thing for the market to do is to gravitate or flag or move toward that green line, which we called the BBC, okay? What we're looking for is the normal, which is to touch it, as it does in that candle there, Okay, right here. That is the touch. But then we're looking for the close in the direction of the trend. Okay, the direction of the trend was outlined by the bearish cross or the red MA1. So now we're looking for a down close or a red candle. I want you to make a note of that. Okay, because here's what's happening. If we get a red MA1 and if we get a red candle, and if we go to step th three and we get a red cycle, which I'll go over in a second, you want everything to be the same color, okay? You want to stack all the probabilities in your corner when everything is the same color, okay? So the down close here is step number two, okay? It's normal after the cross for the market to gravitate for that green line and close in the direction of the trend, okay? One of the biggest questions I'll always get is, why don't you just sell it here? Okay, why wait for the close? Look at what happened. It went straight down. Well, that's after the fact, okay? Sometimes what's going to happen is the market will just go right through it, okay? Well, that's one way to avoid a stop loss, right? So what you're doing, in a sense, is you're sacrificing price for action with this candle, Okay, looking for the normal and then looking for a reaction against the normal. Okay, so that is step number two. We got step number one and step number two in place. So now what we do is we gravitate our eyes toward the slingshot portion or the oscillator portion of the chart.
And this is basically where the trade exists. Okay, so pay attention to this. All right, more buzzwords. This red and blue line is referred to as the cycle. Okay, and the green line, well, it's just, there's no special word for it. It's the green line, okay? But the separation between the green line and the cycle is referred to as the divergence or step number three that Michael refers to in the training room. It's referred to as divergence. He calls it separation now. The bottom line is this space in between here is what he's looking for after step one and step two have fired. Okay? Now let me tell you what this means, what's going on down here. Okay? Robert had this question in the training room this morning. All right? And I had to pick up a phone and, and I didn't get a chance to explain it to him. But here's the scoop. What this cycle is telling you, the fact that it's red, and we like red, right? Because we have a red MA1 and we have a red candle, right? We have a down close. What this cycle is telling you is, look, we're in a downtrend, all right, on the four tick range, okay? We want this to be red. We're in a downtrend, okay? This green line pulling away together with the price action, okay, with this price action going back to the BBC and failing, what this is suggesting is this is just an air pocket in this ongoing downtrend. So that's why you look for the confirmation or you wait for the down close, okay, because you're looking for that extra variable to put the probabilities in your corner, okay? So with the green line pulling away and the market action against the BBC, okay, what this is suggesting is this is a selling opportunity in this ongoing downtrend, and we need to get short. All right, hold on. There's my phone again, so stand by.
that's okay. Yep. All right, sorry guys. That um, have some markets that are moving. So, all right. So this is I'm going to go over the highlights real quick. Number one, the bearish or bullish cross, right? Step number one here. The match is lit when we have the cross. Step number one, when the MA1 is crossing the green line. The normal thing for the market to do after the cross is for the market to gravitate toward the green line. Okay. What we're looking for is not only the touch on this candle, but we're looking for the down close. Okay, we're going to sacrifice price for action. Okay, that is step number two. All right, and then where we left off was step number three. Our eyes gravitate toward the oscillator or the slingshot portion. Okay, this line is called the cycle. Okay, what that is suggesting is that we are heading lower. That's what this is saying. Okay. The green line pulling away from the cycle in conjunction with this price action here, all right, is telling us that this action up here is just an air pocket in this ongoing downtrend. Okay. So when we have step one present, and step two present, and we have this separation that Michael talks about in the room, what you end up doing is you end up going inside the DOM, which is this tower over here, and you end up left-clicking in the red and getting short. That's what you end up doing, okay, when that's all present. All right, because here's what we expect to happen, okay? And this is why I said the trade exists down here in, inside the slingshot. This is telling us the market's going down, right? And this is telling us, hey, this is an air pocket in this ongoing downtrend. As long as we see this kind of price action against the BBC, because this is normal. This is what we expect to happen. As soon as we get short on that close, what we expect to happen is this green line to ultimately come down and get into the cycle or touch it. Okay, this is all the normal stuff we expect to happen. And in doing so, the market will make a new pivot low, and this is where we get the heck out of Dodge. Okay, when this green line comes into the cycle and touches it. Because what we expect to happen it's the screen line to pull away, close the gap, pull away, close the gap, pull away, close the gap. It's going to repeat itself until the cycle turns blue. And then that should be telling us, hey, we're now in an uptrend. And so what we're looking for is that green line to be underneath it, okay, and creating bullish separation on the way up. So in a sense... You're selling that, you're selling that top, you're selling that top, and then when things turn bullish, right, we're starting to head up, you're buying this dip and you're buying this dip because you're expecting those green lines to get back into the cycle. That's a perfect world, okay? doesn't happen that way, but that is what you're looking for, okay? So when you go into the CFRN room, you're not learning to pick the top here, and you're not learning to pick the bottom and trade it from point A to point C. You're going to learn to take a piece out of the middle. And as soon as you get into the trade, you're going to move the stop down, move the stop down, move the stop down until it's time to get out. Okay? And as long as the market is trending, making lower lows or making higher highs, okay, Trending should be number one on your on your piece of paper. As long as we're trending, you're going to be selling those rallies, okay, or you'll be buying those dips, okay? That's the game plan. And every trade will have an eight-tick stop attached to it. So what does that mean? That means if you're brand new 
and you're trading gold and crude, you're risking 80 bucks a contract if you're dead wrong. If it's more like the S&P or the soybeans, it's $100. If it's the YM, it's closer to 40 bucks. Okay? So that's what you're signing up for. You're signing up to scalp the market. Take a piece out of the middle, and you're on a four-tick range chart. So you're looking at the market under a microscope. You have to be engaged in the market. That means you have to be in front of the screens, and you have to know your way around the platform. Okay, you're going to have to learn not only to see the setup, okay, but then go, go inside the chart or inside the DOM here and actually execute a trade. Okay, so that's what we're going to look for in the next 45 minutes, okay? So I got interrupted by a few phone calls, but that's the game plan, okay? Ask questions along the way, guys, okay? This is a chance to do it, all right? So here, the first thing we audit, the first thing that should be on your piece of paper, are we trending? All right, so the one habit I want you guys to get into is hitting the zoom out button, okay? Because sometimes when you're in Mike's room, you get hypnotized by this big chart, okay? And something that might be trending or look like it's trending in this space, if you just take a moment to do one, two, three, and zoom out a little bit, you might find out, well, maybe we're not necessarily trending, okay? So, number one, are we trending? Are we making higher highs or lower lows? And number two, in doing so, you better get in the habit of hitting the zoom out button. I'm not asking you to go to a five-minute or a 30-minute, okay? Just zoom out. It might make the difference between you making money or losing money on a particular trade, okay? So that's step number one, okay? Are we trending? So I look at the S&P right now. I see lower lows, but I also see some support over here, okay, and zooming out. So even though the market did what? The normal thing, the gravitate toward the BBC, the screen line, and follow the down close, okay? This would get, your, get you excited, right? All right. I would hesitate a little bit because I'm concerned that maybe we're not trending. Okay, we have some prior support levels here. Okay. You know, it may fall apart here and you might point the finger at me, but that's just an observation. Okay. So S&P, I'm going to put it parade rest for now. Crude oil. First question we ask ourselves, are we trending? I think this one's pretty easy and obvious, and the answer is no. Okay, something to point out here. If you're not sure, I'm not sure if we're trending or not. Look at your dynamic support and resistance dots. Okay, if they're side by side, side by side, like like you're seeing here, chances are this is a reflection of a market that's trading sideways. Okay, it's a market that's sideways. That's the biggest disqualifier. That's disqualifier number one. Okay, if we're not trending, you're not pushing any buttons. Okay. So Robert's question is, is the probability higher when the trade is in the direction of the trade, is in, in the direction of the trend, meaning up or down? Well, number one, we're only going to take trades. If we're doing the traditional slingshot setup. Okay, that one I just went over. The trend has to be in your favor. The wind has to be behind your back. Okay, Robert? Number two, when everything is the same color. Okay? Now, listen, everyone. This is You want everything to be the same color. So I'm going to show you a picture of this. This is crude oil for March. Bearish cross. Why is it a bearish cross? Because the MA1 is red. What's the normal thing for the market to do? Pull back to the BBC. It does here. We're looking for a down close. The down close is this candle. It's called the Gravestone Doji. Okay? Gravestone Doji. That is a down close. Okay? Our eyes gravitate toward the oscillator portion. Is the cycle red? Yes, it is. Do we have 
separation. Yes, the green line is below. There's nothing else to do, Robert, but to go short right here. Go inside the DOM and left click. Okay. If you want to stack all the probabilities in your favor, okay, that's what you're looking for. That setup. And what do we expect to happen? We expect the green line to gravitate toward the cycle. And that's at this portion here. This is where you're getting out of dodge, right here. Okay. And we expect the market to make a new pivot low, which it did. This here is the perfect setup. Robert, take a snapshot of that. That's what you're looking for right there. That's the wind at your back. That's the market that's trending. That's everything being the same color. Okay. If you just look for those things, okay, there's nothing else to fi filter, right? There's nothing else to think about other than to push a button. Then that's the trade you're looking for okay um do they all work out of course not but that's why we use a stop loss okay and you'll get frustrated because you get stop out because everyone does but um uh, that is what you're looking for no you do not use targets okay you trail the stop trail the stop trail the stop trail the stop until that green line gets into the cycle then you get out. This is your target right here. The normal green line pulls away from the cycle. Green line gets into the cycle. Green line pulls away from the cycle. It touches the cycle. That's your target. Because what you expect to happen, Robert, green line pulls away, does this. Okay? Over and over and over. Now what will end up happening is, is what, what's happening to crude. It's getting stuffed up in a box, right? You see this action, that's a big fat disqualifier. Stay out of there. You're going to lose money. All right. Move on to the natural gas. Same thing. We have some lower lows here, okay, in the natural gas. Uh, my only concern right now is we do have a double bottom here. And you might say, hey, well, we made a lower low here. Well, not really. We didn't spend a lot of time down there. So the natural gas is kind of stuck in, in the mud here, too. So, so we're looking for a market that is trending, making higher highs or lower lows. Okay. All right. Again, the euro is stuck in a range here right now. Notice the first thing I do is I zoom out. I like the fact that we made a lower low. Okay, we made the lower low. That would convince me that we're trending. Okay. But now we're we're back in the range and now we're kind of stuck in a range. So you gotta look for that kind of stuff. Okay. Let's go to gold. Let me get on April gold. There we go. Okay. All right, here's the same setup again. Okay. We were kind of stuck in a range here. Okay, let me point some stuff out here. Bottom here. Oops. Bottom here, right? Support and resistance dots are side by side. Another dot. And then all of a sudden we poked our head underneath it, right? We started trending to the downside. Okay. Here is the first pullback to the BBC, the normal thing. That close is a dragon... A, a doji it's a gravestone doji that's a bearish close okay notice how the cycle is red notice how the green line is pulling away and what happens the market makes a new pivot low so does the green line okay so so for those that said hey well why don't you just put an order in and sell it there to get an edge the reason why you don't do that is because look at this action here it just plows right through it and that's not surprising because, look, now the, the the cycle is now turning blue. We don't want blue. We want red and a downtrend. Okay. All right. So let me, uh, let's look for some other stuff to get dirty with here. Go back to the S&P. I think the S&P is kind of a, a mess here. Okay. Notice the first thing I do is zoom out. We just talked about this. 
about not taking this trade right here. Okay, this one here. All right. If you had it blown up like this and drawn a trend line, okay, potentially you got short on this, this candle here. And look at you would have been stopped out near the high. If you would have taken a few moments just to zoom out the warning I was giving you, there was some prior support here. Okay, so it pays to take a few minutes to zoom out. Okay, all right, so the S&P is a hot mess right now too. So let's go, let's go into somewhere else. I don't care where we go. All right. All right, here's the Canadian dollar. Notice how the first thing I did was zoom out. We do have a bullish cross. Why is it a bullish cross? Because the MA1 is blue. Okay, are we trending? No, we're trading sideways. Okay. Swiss franc. All right, so let me make a point with this one. Okay. All right, get ready. All right, number one. Number one, the, the number one thing that should be on your piece of paper is are we trending, right? Are we making higher highs or lower lows? And we talked about getting in the habit of zooming out, okay? So we have established this, okay? Number two, as soon as you've established that there is a trend, then you're looking for step number one, which is the cross, right? When the MA1 is crossing the BBC, okay? After the cross, what I want you to do now is engage the trend line. It's right here if you have DT Pro. Okay, just go over here and left click. Now your arrow, your mouse has turned into a pair of crosshairs. Okay, and here's the reason why. Number two, okay, after the cross, you engage the trend line, right? After the cross, what do we expect to happen? The normal thing for the market to do is to gravitate toward the BBC, right? All right. Here's the market in the Swiss, Swiss franc trying to gravitate toward the BBC, okay? What you have to get in the habit of doing is drawing trend lines, okay? Because in the end, you never know if it's going to get to this green line. Okay, so you have to get in the habit of drawing trend lines. You're going to see Michael do it all morning. Okay, the reason why you do that is if we can't get to the green line and we have this cycle that's red and we do have the green line pulling away, you have that separation down here. If we close underneath this trend line, it's saying, look, Robert, this market is so bearish, it can't even do the normal thing. If you get that setup, it's telling you, hey, this thing's pretty bearish. It's time to go inside the DOM and execute a trade to the short side. Okay, that's what it's implying. All right, so one second here. All right, so I'm back. So the reason why we draw it, because we don't know if it'll do the normal thing and get back to the green line. And if it doesn't, and it closes on the other side of this trend line, it's time to get inside the DOM and take action. Okay, remember, we left-click in the red, take advantage to the sell side. We left-click in the green to take advantage of the market going up. Okay, the other reason why you draw the trend line, okay, is 
if the cycle turns a different color on you. All right, and I'll see if I can't point that out. Okay, so get in the habit of drawing the trend line after the cross. That should be a habit you you practice. All right, so let's. Uh, okay, this is the crude oil again. It's just messy, so this is no good for you. I don't want to trade there. Okay, here's the one example I wanted to show you. Okay, this is the natural gas in March. Okay, as I just said, after the cross, that's the highlighter there, you engage the trend line, right? You push that button. Left click, and you start drawing a trend line because you're expecting the normal to happen. You don't know if it's going to get here, but if you're drawing the trend line, you're one step ahead, okay? Okay. It touches the trend line. Do we have a down close with this candle? No. Do we have a down close on this candle? No. This is the down close right here. This is step number two. The touch and then the close. What has happened to the cycle? It has turned blue. Okay. Because this has changed colors on you, the trend line is required. So get in the habit of drawing it ahead of time. Because if it doesn't get to the green line, it fails. You're in a position to go inside and take action. If the market goes continues to go up and the cycle turns blue on you, you already have the trend line drawn. Okay? And now, with the color of the cycle turning blue on you, it has to close on the other side of this trend line before you can take action. It has to close below it. You have the trend line drawn, so you're not fumbling with a trend line after the fact. Okay, it's already in place. So again, I'm laboring over that point, draw trend lines. Okay, now let me throw you the curveball. Not only not only did this turn color on you, Robert, this also means that the probabilities have now been watered down. Okay? Not only that, if this thing starts pitching a 45-degree angle, as it's doing right here, that is the second disqualifier. We don't take any trades. Okay? So the first disqualifier. Okay? Markets trading sideways, okay? An easy one to pick out right now was that crude oil, right? This is messy disqualifier number one. Do not take action. Number two, if the cycle turns blue, but it's going against you at a 45-degree angle, okay? That's the squad of fire number two. So Robert's telling me right away, and I expected this, but look at what happened. It doesn't matter. Okay? That will happen. Okay? And it's going to invite you to take the trade the next time because you saw this. All right? Most of the time, the result is chop, 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 up. Okay? This one, no. All right, so remember I said this, okay? If the, if the cycle turns a different color on you, and it's flat. Flat means down here. This is fine if it starts red, blue, red, blue. But if it starts curling up, all right, you're asking for trouble. Yes, you have divergence. I like that observation. You have the separation. This is tilted the wrong way. And look at what's ultimately happening. You're looking at one little piece here. Look at what's happening now. Now we're just creating a little bit of sideways action, and we're starting to gravitate toward up because look at the line now. It's starting to do one of these, all right? So, again, the idea is everything to be the same color, okay? Everything the same color. Uh, don't worry about the burgundy line right now, okay? I don't want to confuse everyone, but I, there is a point of that one. All right, so we're going to go back to the indices. All right, one second.
Okay, we're back to the S&P. Are we trending? Notice how I zoom out. Right now, I think we're stuck in a range. Okay, I know we're starting to make some higher highs. You know, let's do it anyways, because I want to show you some progress in the DOM. Okay, I don't want anyone to touch anything on the DOM. I just want you to watch. Okay, all right, so I'm going to go over some things, because there are some valuable stuff here. Okay, number one, we have the bullish cross. Why is it a bullish cross? Because the MA1 is blue, okay, and crossing the BBC. Okay, that is step number one. Step number two, okay, we're looking for the market to gravitate toward this green line, right? That's a normal thing we expect to happen. So what should we be doing? Activating the trend line. We got to get ready to draw a trend line, right? Number three, the cycle is blue. That is good for the home team if we're trying to get long, right? And the green line is pulling away, all right? Is there a lot of space there right now? No. But if the market does gravitate toward this green line or the BBC, there will be some separation, all right? If that's the case, what we're going to end up doing is we're going to end up left-clicking in the DOM and getting long, all right? So stand up parade rest here. Let's see what happens, all right? So here we, we'll see what happens, okay? Okay, now let me add a few things with the DOM, okay? Number one, what I'd like everyone to do when they get DT Pro is I want them to set up their, their bracket, okay? And you do that by hitting this Tinker Toy Triangle. Notice how I, when I left click on it, the bottom of the DOM opens up, okay? If you select Sell Stop and Buy Stop, and right click over that and hit factor in ticks. If you make everything a ticks, like it shows here, what this will do, as soon as you get into the market, it will automatically place a stop loss eight ticks behind you. Okay, notice if I left click in the green, okay, there's my limit to get in, there's my stop loss. If I get short, Here's my limit to get short, and there's my stop loss eight ticks away, okay? All right, we're looking for the market to do what? The normal thing. Gravitate toward the green line. There is my trend line. That's how your trend line should be drawn. Off the wick, off the wick. All right, now here we go. What has happened? The MA1 has turned colored on us. That is watering down the probabilities on this trade. It also requires a close above this downtrend. We need to close above there before we can take action. Okay. Now this is where Michael becomes, he can be proactive. Okay, now follow along. If the low is 2700, then the high has to be 2701. It will close above the trend line. Okay, so what Michael would do, he would right click, sorry, he would click in at 2701 and a quarter. Okay, if you add or subtract five from then the current high or low, that'll be the exact price you can buy on a stop. Okay, so let's see what happens. As I said, okay, I don't want anybody to do anything, okay? This is red. It's watering down the probabilities, and now it's starting to curl over. This is what we don't want to see, but we're just going to do it anyways to prove a point here, okay? So just, just follow along, okay? This is a learning environment. And I also noted, too, I'm not hot to trot about this because, look, we found some resistance over here, right? So I want you to get in the habit of looking, zooming out. All right. So here, we're just kind of waiting for things to happen. Okay. So there's a two ways to approach this. If we close on the other side of the trend line, which is required because this has turned red on us, we can either left click in the green or we can do what Michael does, which is just place a buy. Okay. So it made a lower low. So I'm going to cancel the order. Okay. We still need a close on the other side of the trend line here. Now, one sec here. 
the trend line now should look like this. Okay. Need to close above the trend line. Why? Because the cycle is red. Is this good for us if we want to get long? No. Okay. All right. The third disqualifier just hit us in the face. See the black step line here? It pierced the BBC. Not only did we not get an up close, but now the black step line is piercing the BBC. That's the third disqualifier. Okay? Third disqualifier. Number one, if we're not trending, we don't push any buttons. Number two, it was kind of hitting us in the face right here. If it's a different color and, and curling over at a 45 degree angle, that's disqualifier number two. And number three, which usually happens when this happens, is a black step line catches and crosses the BBC. Okay? Three disqualifiers. Okay? This is the biggest trap that people will fall into. Number one, they get into a market that's not trending, and I'd warned you this might be a problem. And number two, the, the cycle turns color on them, but then starts curling over on them. Okay? They get ex excited about um, getting into the trade. Um, they forget about um, they forget about the, the, the shape of that or the slope of that. All right. All right. So I, I'm glad I, I went over that I wanted to show you the DOM. I was hoping actually it would go up and I could place in order or trade, but it's that's not going to be so this time. So hold on. We'll find something else to screw around with. Okay, you notice the habit I getting into zooming out. No, we're not trending. Let's go to gold. Okay, we had the bullish cross here, right? The MA1 is blue. Okay. I zoom out. I'm kind of stair-stepping down. Um, not enough separation here. So the gold is is doing nothing. Let's go to the euro. All right, so let's do something here in the euro. All right. I did a few things here. Okay, again, I just want to show you the DOM. I don't want anyone to do anything. Okay, so here's what I did. Ignoring a lot of things here, but two variables that stick out. Number one, the bearish cross. Right, MA1's cross on the BBC. Number two, when that happens, what do we do? Activate the trend line and start drawing a trend line, right? That's how your trend line should look. One, two, there's step number two. Okay, the tempt, the BBC, and the close. Do we have a red cycle? That's good for the home team, and the green line's pulling away. So we have separation, right? So what I did, all right, just so I can get something on, okay, I left-clicked in the red, okay, because everything's saying short it. All right, so I left click there. That is my entry, and there's my stop loss, eight ticks away. All right, so let's see what happens. If it goes plus four ticks in our favor, one, two, three, four, right here, right, and we're going to move that stop to break even. So hang with me here because my phone's ringing.
All right. So to, to go over this again, a few things. Number one, we are short. That on the DOM tells us that's where we're short from. So at the top of the DOM here, we're also short. Okay, that's another place. Look at the chart. That's also another place that tells you that you're short and your P&L starts moving. It's about four spots that lets you know, hey, you're short this market. All right. Do you guys understand why I did? Okay. Bearish cross. We look for the normal thing. Pull back to the BBC. Okay. In the process, we draw the trend line. Is the trend line required? No. Why? Because the cycle is red and pointing down, and we do have separation. Okay. There's my phone again. Stand by. All right, so here's the money management part. It's gone four ticks in our favor, right? So here's our stop. We left click over the number one and drag it down and release it. Our stop is at our entry. Our stop is at our entry. Okay, again, left click, drag, release. Left click, drag, and release. Okay. When Michael talks about the stop going to break even, that's another word, another way of saying put it where your entry was. Okay. The risk is off the table. Okay. Now, what do we expect to happen? Ultimately, we expect this green line to do what? Go down and gravitate into the cycle. And in doing so, the market should make a new pivot low, right? This is what should happen. Okay, so that's that's the game plan. We all clear on that. Now let me make a let me make a point here. Okay, let me get rid of all the squiggly lines. Hey, right, here's a market that really isn't trending. All right, we're trading sideways. Again, the reason I did this and said hold back is because I wanted to show you how to get inside the DOM and push a button, and I also wanted to show you how to drag the stop down, okay? And there was a few variables that I liked. I liked the cross. I liked the red line, the, the red cycle turning down, and I liked the separation. There was a lot of good things to say, you know what, this is probably a good one to demonstrate it on, okay? But to be very transparent, okay, we're kind of stuck in a range here, okay? But let's see what happens. The good thing is I was able to show you how to drag the stop to, to break even, okay? So the money management rules, okay? If the market goes plus four ticks in your favor, you move the stop to your entry. If it closes on the other side of this MA1, this blue line here, if it closes down here, that's another reason to move the stop down, Okay? All right, so it's doing what it wants to do now, okay? I'm sorry the phones are buzzing. There's just a few things that are moving, and and uh, guys need some uh, need some help. So, okay. So, anyways, while we watch this happen, okay. So here, I'm going to exit at market and cancel. Just going to get out of it, okay? So I don't want to send her a look at paint dry. I want to try to look at one more, okay? So let's go for it. Okay. This is, maybe we were looking at this, okay? Robert, you said, and I'm glad you pointed this out, but that natural gas trade, like, wow, look at that. It still went down. Here's that example, okay, where the cycle was curling over, and look at what the market did. That's what normally happens. All right, stand by.
Okay. We're looking at the S&P. Okay. Again, S&P right here really wasn't trending, but it shows a good example of the bearish cross, the market doing the normal thing, which is pull back to the BBC with the down close, everything being the same color. Okay. If you can wait patiently for that, okay, you stack all the probabilities in your favor. Okay. Now, if this comes back here again, notice how we engage the trend line. Okay. We're going to get ready to draw a trend line. We get another green candle here. We're going to start drawing. Okay. So what we're looking for is we're looking for a shorting opportunity. Why? Because back here we have the bearish cross. That MA1 is red. Are we trending? Yep, we're making lower lows. So now we're going to look to get short. What's the normal thing for the market to do? Gravitate toward the BBC. In the process, we engage our trend line because we don't know if it'll get there or this cycle will turn blue. If this cycle turns blue, Robert, it waters the probability down. Okay. If this turns blue on us, and I'm not picking on you, Robert. You're just I just happened to see your name. Um, if it stays blue, okay, the trend line is required, and the and we'll need a close below it. All right. What we don't want to see is this thing turn blue and start curling up. All right. All right. So now we're waiting. Okay, we're waiting to draw a trend line. We're waiting for the market to do the normal. Okay, so this is kind of the progress or the steps I want you to think about when approaching. Okay, the chart here every single day. Okay, are we trending? All right, we're trending. Do we have the cross? Is it a bullish or bearish cross? Engage my trend line. Okay, those should be automatic. All right. If it does close below the trend line, what action am I going to take? Okay, you're, 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 you're training yourself to just get in a position to take action and push buttons instead of think about it. And guess what, guys? If you have to think about it, all right, then don't take any action at all. It should be automatic. Okay? When in doubt, stay out. I, Michael, um, takes takes a catchphrase from me if it if it's not easy and obvious don't do it look for the easy and obvious okay what's easy and obvious to you everything's the same color we're trending we're making higher highs or lower lows is that a guarantee of success no of course not that's why we have stop losses in place okay all right maybe this is the one that turns up Trying to get rid of this trend line here, so I apologize. All right. Can we all agree that is trending? Okay. Before we weren't, now we are. You might look backwards and say, well, this looks pretty here. Okay, but we had support here. So what normally happens, guys, is that you may run into support here and then once it gives way you get this explosion down right that's just a result of it breaking support okay the buyers become sellers and they get out and then you get this big move and you say hey i missed this move well you didn't because actually you got a little lucky all right so we're just waiting for this thing to do the normal Unfortunately, it's about 2.15. All right. So I'm going to stop the program here because I have about three three phone calls to make that I promised people I would call them back as they called here this afternoon. Okay? So here, the takeaways, a few things. Number one, we're going to go over this every Thursday, okay, for one hour. And you're going to hear me labor over the same things over and over and over. Zoom out. Okay? Get in the habit of drawing a trend line, okay? All that other stuff I'm going to hammer, okay? And those are things you should absorb because that's how you should approach this, okay? Um, and then honestly, guys, 
you have to get inside the DOM. You have to push buttons. You have to review your trades. That'll be another good habit to get into. Win, lose, or draw, okay? Review your trades. You're going to have to put some work into it, okay? Finally, we're getting the trend line. The trend line is required. Why? Because this is blue, okay? It will have to close on the other side of this trend line before you consider getting short. And if this thing starts curling up on you, okay, if it starts doing one of these, no trade. All right. All right. I have to pick up this line. All right. Anyways, that's that's an hour. We'll, we'll, we'll see you in the morning. And then um, we'll go over it next Thursday. Okay. And if you have questions, you know, send me an email or call. That's fair game. Okay. And I recorded this, by the way. All right, see you guys.